Personal notice, danger is my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Greetings, mystery lover. Time for another Let George Do It adventure. This one is called Spring Session, and it's all about a home economics teacher who was so busy minding other people's business that it took everything that George Valentine had to keep her from getting her goose cooked. I think you'll like him. Dear Mr. Valentine, if we all minded our own business, it wouldn't improve the world much. In fact, it would probably make life even lonelier than it is. And I, for one, am certainly not going to stand by and watch tragedy occur to a neighbor without butting in to yell for help, your help. And it's needed immediately, before our lovely little campus here at Manzanita College is exploded into every headline in the country, or before my neighbor is himself exploded. Sincerely, Miss Norma Flinders. Instructor of Home Economics, Manzanita College. Those are certainly lovely roses, Miss Flinders. Yes, yes, I wanted you to see them. And I've had the nicest sweet peas on faculty row every spring for years. It's the fertilizer, I think. Oh, uh, Miss uh, Flinders, we've been here for nearly half an hour now, and you still haven't said one word about your letter. Of course not, Mr. Valentine. Why should I? Well, if you mean that something's changed since you wrote it, this this tragedy that Nonsense. you talk... Nonsense. Nothing's changed. If anything, it's worse. What is? Well, the whole situation, good heavens. Uh... What situation? Uh, Mr. Valentine, will you please drink your coffee and eat your cake? I know perfectly well... Oh, there now. Excuse me. At least you've learned all about the college, haven't you? Aren't you interested in higher education? Quite a place this time of year, you know. My, yes. George, what kind of a person is this? Ah, my dear Miss Flinders. Otto, what a surprise. Come right in, Professor. Please come in, come in. Why, surprise? Did you ask me to drop by, or has my secretary mixed up Some the... Some old friends day? of mine just dropped in from the city. Oh. Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine, this is Professor Otto Ringel. He is our dean of libraries here. How do you do? Yes, yes, the man who chases the bookworms. Pleasure, young lady. You too, sir. All right, Professor. But I guess there aren't many bookworms this time of year, are there? Mm. Or this time of day? Mm -hmm. Spring. Libraries empty every night. Finest book collection in the state. Huh. What good is it? Colleges should be locked up in the spring. Oh, you mean the students find other things to do besides homework? Ah, even the faculty. Even the what, Professor? Hmm? Well, well, <clears throat> no importance, no importance. Oh, I say, lovely sweet piece out there, Flinders. Mr. Valentine, perhaps I should explain. Professor Rengel is my neighbor. Hmm, what? Oh, that's nice. Hey. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I understand. Well... Anything wrong with that? Uh, uh, sit down, sit down, sir. We were uh, just talking about the college. No, 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 and we'd no, no. Like I'm to, sorry, uh... young man, sorry, but I'm in sort of a hurry. You are? Why? Hmm? Well, I have work to do this evening. Uh, I only dropped by because you asked Your me. new secretary brought back the keys to my car, Professor. Hmm? She said she'd used it to run an errand for you. Uh, well, <laughs> yes, yes, of course, that's right. Yes, thank you very much. I just wondered, you, uh... Hadn't mentioned it yourself. Oh, didn't I? Yeah. Blasted nuisance not owning a car, you know. Uh -huh. <clears throat> well... Sometimes uh... it's hard to work a car into the budget. There's so many other things to spend money on. Now, if you'll just sit down, I'll cut you a piece of cake that I baked uh, myself. Uh, no, 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 no. I have to be going. Really, it's, it's been a pleasure, Miss Brooks, uh, Mr. Valentine, but no thank you, no, well, no. Well, now, why not? You have nothing else uh, to no, do. No, no, really, really. I'm so sorry, but some other time. Good night, really. Good night. <sighs> He never used to work in the evening. All right, Miss Flinders. So that's the guy you wrote the letter about. 
But would you tell he me what... He didn't know his secretary had taken my car using his name. He didn't know she used it to meet a strange man. Miss Flinders, please listen to me, will you? You claimed a tragedy was brewing that would hit every headline in the country. Mr. Valentine, we exaggerate our own importance here at college. I know that. But I don't exaggerate what I see, what I know. Well, this professor seems perfectly all right. Oh, he's pale. He's jumpy. Didn't you notice? He's working at night when he's never done that in his life before. He avoided talking to you. He did. Oh, now, wait a minute. Look, he, he... has a new secretary. Her name is Maria Snodgrass. What? She's here for one purpose, and she's admitted this much. To find the man with the most money on the campus. She's a working girl, but she's got a brand new mink coat. She won't let people see it, but I've seen it. She's got a platinum wristwatch that she doesn't wear in public. She's up to no good. Yes, yeah, sure, I see. But, uh, Miss Flinders, I'm afraid that we're Arto not... Rengel is up to something, too, but he's a fool. And a professor's good name is about all he's got in a place like this. Well, if you mean he's mixed up with his secretary, She that's... borrowed my car to go to a town three miles away. I got another one and followed her. She met and picked up a man who already had a car of his own, a huge Cadillac from the city. But they parked it in a garage where it couldn't be seen. And she brought him back, and he's out here someplace on the campus right now. Well, your story picks up a little at last. Mr. Valentine, haven't you ever heard of the old army game? Hmm? She's met that man secretly before. He's ugly, and he smokes a cigar. I bet he's her partner. I bet he's her husband. You're listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to Let George Do It and George Valentine. about one thing. The library's as empty as a morgue. Yeah. Well, I guess the offices are through here. Yeah. No lights, Angel. Hey, wait. Something in this room. Reserved research study section. See librarian for permission. Yeah, heck with him. It's her I want to see. What? Yeah, look. Down by the glass cases. I, I love that's... you. I love you. I love you. Chris, stop it. Get out of here. Shh, listen. Maria, please. I told you I can't go out with you tonight. Now Maria, get it's her, all, all right. right. And not All better. right. Yeah, but, you but who's the... You can't up until I leave, can you? I will resume work on my thesis. Miss Snodgrass, open up your precious Sheridan manuscripts in case B. Hey, forget if your you hands please. off me. How many drinks have you had, anyway? Only what you have driven me to. You stopped that thesis two weeks ago. You gave it up. You've got no more I business here I stopped when I met you. The world stopped when I met you. Let go of me. You're hurting my arm, Avery. I love you. I love stop you. Stop it. Stop it. All right, all right, all right. Closing time at the zoo, kids. Who are you? The keeper. Only the lady says beat it, so I'll out you go. I'll have you know I am a master of literature, a graduate research fellow, and I am not in the habit of... Oh, <laughs> get away, no, no, you, you big dog. Get that sure. beard out of my face, Buster. <laughs> out you go. <laughs> His name is Avery. He's in love with me. He's jealous. Yes, he was a little subtle, but I, I got that impression. He's funny. He's really nice. He wants me to marry him. Well, I thought you were already married. What? Me? Well, the other guy you picked up in the car downtown, I told you what Miss Flinders said about Oh, him. Mr. Valentine, you're worse than Avery. You know who that man is, the man with the cigar? His name is Franz Barker, and he's a book dealer from Boston. Just one of the hundreds who do business with Professor Engel. Well, ask Professor Engel himself. This Barker has a car of his own, and you left he it... He left his car in the garage in town to be greased. Uh, okay, Maria. So you don't have a husband, and as for Professor Engel... I think my boss is, well, a very sweet old fuddy-duddy. And he's certainly not in any kind never of... Never mind, never mind. I'll finish it. There's nothing happening. You're a nice girl, and the season is spring. A beautiful spring. Yeah. And in the spring, Miss Flinders falls in love with Professor Wrangle, her next-door neighbor, right? Oh, 
every spring, from what I hear. She spies on the poor guy. The poor guy can't stand her. She bakes cakes and cooks up stories about him because he won't eat them. In short, she's a nosy busybody who's ten times as jealous as your boy Avery could ever be. And never mind, don't answer me. I got the idea. Come on, Angel. We're going home. Everybody thinks the world turns on it. Everybody who doesn't have it thinks that people who do are up to something mysterious. Hey, or something. Uh, huh? Avery! Oh, didn't want you to step on me, that's all. Oh, brother. Come on, friend. Up on your feet. There's no place for a lovelorn suicide. Hey, hey, hey. Watch. Oh. oh, there. Oh, Buster. You sure sobered up in a hurry. Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah, I, I guess so. Getting knocked over the head does that for a man, doesn't it? By what? A lamppost? Well, I I was going to kill the guy. She wouldn't go out with me, and I thought he was the reason. Miss Flinders told me he was Maria's husband. Oh, not you, too. You mean it was that Mr. Barker So from... I'm stupid, but he's no more a book dealer than I am, I can tell you that. What? Uses diction like a racetrack tout. And there's something else. I was crazy, I guess. He was just walking here, but he tried to get away from me, so I tackled him and... Oh, oh, here. One of them dropped. I, I ah, remember. What, what are, are you, you looking for? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Look here. Can you see it? It's a bill. His wallet must... A thousand dollar bill. Yeah, he had a large roll of them, done up like a package. Why? I don't know. And he grabbed it back up. Didn't think I saw it, I guess. But before he ran off, I... <laughs> I mean, when he slugged me. Why did he do it with the butt of a gun? George, there's Maria. The light's still on in the same room. She still hasn't locked up. Yeah. Hey, Maria. Maria, you seen your boyfriend yet? He doesn't look very pretty. He stopped by your room after I went to see Miss Flinders to apologize for not believing at least some of her stuff. Only she wasn't home either. So we're back to hear the truth from you instead of... George! Maria. Come on, sister. Stand up and... She's dead. Yeah. Yeah, the beautiful, beautiful spring is over for Maria. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now, back to George Valentine. Spring session at Manzanita College, when everyone's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of love. That's the way it was with Miss Flinders. For instance, the things she imagined about her neighbor, the dean of libraries. But Professor Rengel has a secretary, and if your name is George Valentine, when you think of her, then you must turn to thoughts of murder. Yeah, that's right, Sergeant. She was beaten, strangled, just sitting there in the chair. She... Yeah, I know I told you that guy from Boston has a gun, but he... Yeah, Barker, that's his name. That's the guy. All right, sure, springtime, a crime of passion. Only get out here, will you? The door's locked. A patrolman's got the keys. It's all yours. Well, did you get her on the phone, Angel? Miss Flinders is back home, George. It's only down the next block. Oh, yeah. Campus drugstore. Hey... Nice elm-lined streets, Those huh? Those are eucalyptus. All right, all right. Be literal. But is this peaceful place going to blow sky high? <laughs> Miss Flinders isn't. Huh? And I told her about Maria. She was upset, of course, but she also said, I told you so. Yeah, yeah, Mr. sure, Valentine. sure. Mr. Valentine, Mr. Valentine. Speak of the witch. Cross the lawn, George. This house. Oh, come, come quickly, please. 
please hurry. All right, what's the matter? I've got him. He's in here. I've got him. Oh, Professor Rengel, of course. This is his house. I ran over the minute you phoned. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, the professor. He's the murderer, naturally. Well, I don't know. Do you? Okay, I'm sorry. Come on. I'm right here. Thank you. Right here. Hello. She tell you about it? I, I can't believe it. Maria was such I've a... already told Mr. Valentine what kind of a person that girl was. Like telling me she was married to that guy Barker. I may have exaggerated just a bit once or twice. Or three or four times. No, 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 please. I told you something awful was happening. Stop it. Where was Maria? Just sitting in a chair beside some empty glass cases. The library. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But listen, I got to work fast. Where can I find that man Barker? Barker? I don't know. He was out here tonight to see you, wasn't he? Uh, Yes, but I don't know. Otto, you must have some idea. Be quiet, will you? Leave me alone. Sure, leave him alone. His girlfriend's dead. Professor, who is Barker, anyway? Just a man I do some business with, that's all. What kind of business? I won't tell you. I can't tell you. Maria told me once he was some sort of a salesman. Be quiet. For heaven's sake, be quiet. That's right. He might be, Miss Flinders. Kind of a salesman who sells notes, maybe, or letters, or pictures. I don't know who killed Maria. Leave me alone. The kind of a guy you might make a big payment to. No wonder you can't afford a car. Yeah, you might have paid off just tonight in thousand-dollar bills. I have nothing to say. That's what I meant all along, Mr. Valentine. Blackmail. Otto, why don't you You know the kitchen, Scullion, be quiet. Oh. A reputation is all a man has. In hands like yours, one tiny mistake could be stretched until the world exploded. You've already done a pretty good job. Otto, I don't understand. I will not tell you anything, Mr. Valentine. I don't need to. I did not murder the girl. But someone must know something about... how about... long it takes a man to walk three miles, huh? Wait, 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 where are you going? To drive the same distance, to try to get the other side of whatever story you'll make up while I'm gone. Oh, I'd forgotten that car Come business. on, hurry up, Angel. Barker's the boy we want. Only garage in town, George. It must be the one. Yeah. Maria claimed he left his Cadillac here to be greased. Well, I guess the lube entrance is around on the George, other side. George, look. The storage exit. Hey, yeah. Maybe we did make it in time. Just in time. Come on. It's a Cadillac. The man driving, smoking a cigar. Oh, no, Brooksy. Back to our car. What? Yeah. All right, Brooksy. Stay there in the shadow now. But you can't stop him, George. He's already oh, driving out. Oh, yes, I can't stop him. Get off the horn, friend. What's the big idea, Mac? You can't make a U-turn there. Get out of my way. Take it easy. Take it easy. I just want to find out if your name is Barker, that's all. If it's what? Who are you? Because if it is, my car stays here until... Get that hand out of your pocket. Get out of my way. Don't be so anxious, Buster. All right. All right, don't hit me back. That's better. But I'll hold the gun, huh? I got a permit, see? You don't need to... Brooksy, go through his car before we call a cop. Hey, what's the idea? You got no idea... Stand still, will you? The pockets, that's all I want. Nothing in the dash compartment or in the back, George. Wait, what kind of a public hold-up you think... Look behind the seats, will you? Pants pockets, too, friend. Ah, here we are. Yeah, the name's really Barker, all right, isn't it? Let go of me. Take off that coat. I want to see the lining. Now, what's your real business, Buster? What are you here to see Wrangle for? I don't have to tell you anything. What do you know about Maria? Who was she, your wife? Uh, How long have you been running your little shakedown racket? I got a lawyer. I got my rights. Nothing under the hat, Ben. Say, are you interested in the penalty for blackmail, or shall I talk about murder? So I'm dumb. So who's dead? Oh, you're dumb, all right. George, there isn't a thing in the car. There's not a sign of that money in the car. Money? What money? Oh, shut up. You'll be for it. That's the last pocket. Angel, he's right. What money? But he must have taken a payoff tonight from... So you got nothing on me, so I say nothing. Okay, say nothing in jail, too. I don't need you. Hey, what's going on here? Nothing, officer. Just figuring out a murder, that's all. (laughs) 
Barker could have switched that package of money to somebody else. Yes, I thought of that, Avery. If there really was a big bundle of money in the first place. But, oh, now, wait a minute. I saw it. I told you. Sure, sure, but it was a crime of passion. What's that got to do with it? And how about that $1,000 bill? I didn't just dream that up. Avery, just don't get so passionate about it. That's all, will you? No, they're not on the porch. The lights aren't on either. Maybe they went back to Miss Flinders' house, George. Oh, cops are at the library. I guess they're not over Wait a minute, here. wait a minute. Hmm? Out and back there. Come on, cut across the lawn, through here. On the drive. They're getting in her car. Miss Flinders. And let go of that wheel. Oh, no. All right, I'll take the keys instead. Yeah, everybody wants to go for a ride tonight. Well, uh, I don't drive. She was just going I to... was going to take him to see his lawyer. If Otto's mixed up in this thing, and of course he is, then he ought We've to got have... something else to do first. I'll get him a lawyer. Don't worry. Oh, no. Let's not anybody worry. Holy smoke, but... Professor. It's awful, isn't it? I mean, I thought I was in love with Maria, oh, hello, but I found... Man. I... Mr. Valentine, Otto was being blackmailed. Unless he gets legal protection, the newspapers will get hold of Miss him. Miss Flinders, you're acting like you think the professor killed her. What? Oh, oh, no, I... You're I... offering to drive him someplace and maybe disappear someplace if you can make it before the police come for questioning. That's not true, Mr. Valentine, please. But it you... could work both ways, couldn't it? What? I... A getaway for either person in the car. Wait a minute, Brooksy. Miss Flinders, the professor was mixed up with his secretary. Anybody who'd come near her would be. Sure he was, all right. I can be tell quiet, you a few things. Right? You're, you're achieving nothing more Tonight a to... payoff was made. Lots of money in cash. I got the guy who was mixed up in it, Barker. No. And he'll talk soon enough. But Miss Flinders... If the professor made a payoff, would he then murder Maria? Does a man who's being blackmailed both pay the money demanded and then kill the cause of his blackmail? He might do one or the other, but would he do both? I, I don't know. I, I'm confused. So in this blackmail murder, Professor Rangel couldn't be the murderer, could he? I was a fool, gullible sucker. Oh, now don't try so hard, Professor. That's a poor straw to grab at. Because the next deduction is that you were not being blackmailed. What? Now, there's a much simpler explanation. For instance that Barker is a book dealer. That guy? A little different type book dealer, that's all, because here's point two. Brooks, he's something that you said a while ago and that what? I remember noticing. Maria was sitting in a chair beside some empty glass bookcases. Empty ones. Uh, well, often our books in that room are being repaired or loaned out. Oh, yeah, sure. I imagine any student or even a member of the faculty or staff would believe it if you told him that, Professor. You could, in time, cover up any books missing from the reserve section. That's right, George. But not if there's a man around who's trying to use those books in writing a thesis. He'd raise a little noise, wouldn't he? Me? What are you talking Mr. about? Valentine. So come on, pile out of the car. Let's go to the library and see what we can find out. But, but weren't those manuscripts in the Avery, case? there was nothing in those cases when you were there either. You just weren't in shape to notice. When you pounded on the glass and told Maria to open up the precious Sheridan manuscripts in case B. Holy smoke. So that's why she made a play for me. Now you're getting it, Buster. I suppose you stopped working on your thesis using those manuscripts as reference when Maria first made a play for you. In other words, she was sicked on to you by the professor to get you out of the way. The one guy who might cause trouble. Mr. Valentine, all this talk about books and manuscripts... Hey, Sheridan, he was a playwright, wasn't he? 18th century? And manuscript, that means that he wrote it in his own hand. Well, the stuff in the glass cases ought to be worth a good deal more than a thousand dollars, shouldn't it? Thousand? Brother, that library has stuff worth twenty or thirty or forty thousand. I'm, I'm doing sorry, any... Professor Ringle. But a little while ago, I was looking for money in the wrong place. What do you mean, George? Yeah, you see, we've been looking at this whole thing upside down. That's all. Barker came out here tonight to give you some money, Professor. No, stop it! Let go! Give me that! Oh. Thing. You don't need money anymore, Buster. Maria can't use any more mink coats. So what happened tonight? Was that why she was up in the library? Did she find out where you were getting the money to give her things? She didn't know I was selling rare items from the library. But tonight she found out, you mean. She accused you of it and you had a fight. No, no, you blasted me! Oh, oh, get away from here! <laughs> Holy smoke, what's the matter with him? I didn't do anything to warrant him to fight with me. Spring, 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 get me away from him, Mr. Valentine. Yeah, sure, sure, I understand. <laughs> spring session. Understand what? What did he try to kill me nothing, for? Nothing, nothing. Come on, Wrangle. But, Mr. Valentine... Forget it, kid. Forget it. Yes, forget it. It's spring. That's all. Miss Flinders, why hurt people who don't need to be hurt? You and Miss Brooks meet me at your place in a couple of minutes. I think you'll understand what happened. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. You say
say Maria fell in love with that boy, Avery? Sure, Miss Linders. That was the real reason Ringo killed her. He couldn't stand it, that's all. And he was the one who got them together. And why hurt Avery by telling him that? Oh, but Avery's poor. Maria was so mercenary. Oh, don't do what the professor did. He underestimated the season, that's all. Oh, there's no fool like an old fool. Oh, I guess the professor couldn't help himself, Miss Flinders. What? Oh, oh no, no. I, I was talking about myself. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> Well, at least you were right in almost everything you told us. Oh, George, don't be so blind. Oh, I pursued that man for a great many years. I understand. Well, so do I, really. I, I was just trying to get away from the subject of spring and romance, that's all. I was merely... I'm... Well, what's the matter, Angel? We'll talk about your bad habits in private, darling. You have just heard Spring Session, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now, this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 